Hi everyone, it's Darren Crouch from DH Crouch Marine Limited. Uh, just a quick video on stone gear. Um, I've done a previous video on installing it in a boat uh, on Angel 2. Um, quite new to the YouTubing thing, still going to persist with it. I think people are enjoying it. I will find a format that works and I promise my editing will get better as I go on. So, But here we are. So just to let you know, so all this equipment here, excluding uh, the bolts and the, the bit of metal there, that plate there and the grease was uh, provided by uh, Clements Engineering. Um, they are a company that produce marine parts and they have um, literally produced everything you see here. The shaft, the steel boss, the bearing, the gland, uh, the propeller, which was cast. They, as far as I know, they're the only company in the UK that cast um, the propellers and other such things. And I believe they even cast the gland as well. So if you need them to do anything, I will put a description of who they are down in the comments below. Um, fabulous company, and they really friendly, and anything goes wrong. Never has yet, but they do. They just work with you, and they're really good people, so highly recommend them. Um, so this job I've got here is for a customer that's got a, an old-fashioned um, bolt-on boss on the boat. So basically, this steel boss here um, is very common, you see now on boats. It's actually welded to the hull. The plate I've got there is to allow this to go inside that. Um, the idea being that uh, once it's in, it's a welded fixture, it's solid. Now, the gentleman I'm working for has got this boss, which has got a bolt at the top and the bottom, say 12 and 6 o'clock. Um, they're quite common. I'm not sure who made them and why, um, but they are prone to failing and they can fail quite dramatically as well. Uh, I know the guy has got water coming in already um, and therefore he wants a complete change of system. And I believe the, the equipment's worn out anyway. Uh, this propeller is actually left-handed because he's got an older style engine and gearbox. Um, I asked him to make that for that particular job. Um, so the plan here basically is to remove the old gear, put this in, we'll weld it all in place and it'll be a far more reliable system. Um, just to clarify a couple of details here. Um, this is an old fashioned style packing box. A lot of people on boats have got these. Uh, a lot of modern boat builders now aren't putting these on boats anymore. Um, they're using deep water seals. And it's basically a system which relies on a softer uh, cutlass bearing. Uh, this one is solid. I believe it's uh, it will be a, a bronze mixture of some degree. I'm sure the metallurgy uh, experts out there will tell me, but um, it's possibly synthered, I believe. Um, basically, this is a physical solid metal bearing which supports a shaft. Many, many, many problems I'm seeing on canals and shallow water uh, systems where you're getting all sorts of contamination on the propeller. Uh, things like uh, car tyres, believe it or not. Uh, I had a customer on a wide beam managed to bend the shaft, and the shaft was a thicker diameter than this. This is one and a half inch diameter. Um, they managed to bend the shaft and therefore require a new cutlass bearing because the cutlass bearing had chewed out inside. Now, a softer cutlass bearing is, I believe, it's neoprene, but don't quote me on that. So the idea is it's soft rubber inside. If it's the, the, the shaft floats on a kind of film of, of water whilst the prop's spinning. Fabulous piece of kit, um, but not very resilient to shallow water and to contamination on the shaft. Um, it, it, my preferred preference is this old system. I appreciate they can be messy, but if you get a car tyre, a mattress, and believe it or not, they, some people put mattresses in the canals. I don't know what that's about. Um, you're going to get this, this damage happening to your equipment. You've got a lot of power being delivered to a propeller, you know, especially if you're going quite quickly. You shouldn't be going past four knots, but you know, sometimes you want to slow down. You've got to chuck it in reverse. You've got to stick a lot more power in order to slow that whole craft down. So that happens, and then say you get something on the prop. If you're lucky, it'll just stall the engine if it's contamination or lump of wood, or whatever. Damage will be done, but potentially not catastrophic to your engine system. However, some cases you can bend your shaft and you damage your blade and propeller. Um, the shaft is less of a um, less likely to take an impact, I find, with a physical support. Um, deep water seals, great, less low maintenance. Only need to grease them up with silicone grease once a year, but you're not getting the great support of this old system. So it's a matter of opinion what people do and how they do it. Uh, new doesn't necessarily mean better. I do believe you need to know why you're putting that in, and uh, if that's what you're going for, fine. But generally, you're buying a boat new. With that equipment in because the new builders decided to go for it i'm not going to digress onto that because that's not what this video is about 
this is basically about the fundamental key components here you're seeing here so just to quickly tell you what everything is so starting from the end so there's your nut that would go on the end of the uh, the uh, shaft there this is a locking tab that actually has a special notch cut out of it and the idea being is that it will uh, locate onto the propeller into the keyway there so that will stop that tab from spinning on the shaft then once that nut's done up you bend the tab back over against the cross flat so whenever you measure a, 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 a hex uh, nut you, you measure it from one flat to the other flat and then you'd uh, know what size it is so the tab facing this side you would actually knock the tab over onto the flat each side and that would create a locking point so that helps reduce the chance of this undoing itself uh, quite an effective system this is simply a key that would locate into the shaft here and that creates a physical locking point for the propeller again stops it from spinning on the shaft um, you've got a taper here which will marry up to the taper inside the propeller here and this is why you can't just go and buy a propeller off the shelf i know you think you can and sometimes you probably could tapers are something that have to be married up it's just too much of a complicated conversation right now to have in this video but um if you're thinking you're just going to go and buy a propeller at tesco you ain't going to do that anyway i digress so here's your steel boss this would uh, th these are all threaded together yeah so the glands your bearing and your boss all screw together um so that would be welded to the hull of the boat once the alignment's checked out and doing that job um once the once the steel side of things is welded into place you're working from the inside of the boat and you would then uh, screw your bearing that way into the boss you do it up with a with a sealant on the uh, thread make sure it's a good sealant to stand underwater use and again you'd uh, you'd screw on your gland now the whole purpose of me making this triangular plate here with the threads is that once this is done up inside the boat Preferably you want that port at the top for your greaser, that's what feeds the line into there. And then this plate would be what would keep this from undoing itself. Um, there's a, there will be a support plate in the boat somewhere, but again, I haven't seen it yet. So I need, I just thought I'd make this, I can just weld this to it. And then that's all the kind of complicated bits done because I'm working with tide. Um, I believe I have a window for a long low tide, but one tries to plan ahead and be prepared. Okay, so. That's the basic fundamentals what you've got here. This plate here is simply to reinforce the back of the craft for the new steel boss. The Quite commonly, the back of the hull or the stern will come to a triangular point like this, and then you would actually just, you know, cut a hole for your steel boss to go in at the peak of the, uh, the, peak of the join. This isn't like that. It comes to a flat point like this. So you've got a flat plate at the back, which makes my life a lot easier. The reason that's the case, if you can imagine when you come to weld, I'll be using a MIG to weld. So that's now looking from the inside outside of the boat. So I can't keep it straight because obviously it's too much to hold. But basically I can get a welding nozzle in around here and create a nice weld on both sides comfortably. If I was dealing with two, uh, two plates that met at a triangle, trying to get into that tight corner of the welding nozzle is difficult. You can do it because it's done, but hey, I'm looking forward to this job because I've planned it carefully and it should be a nice nice one to do and access is very good. Um, and I believe the hole on that boat is 6mm, that's an 8mm piece of um, steel so I'm just offering a bit more surface area, a bit more strength. I've got various triangles to kind of reinforce things if I think they're needed. Um, triangles when I say that is simply to weld sort of here down to there just to create a strong point. I may or may not use those, it's just opening up possibilities of it. Right, so there's your gland. Um, obviously this is your flange that meets the gland. Let me take that off quickly and show you. So simply that once this is all together, the job of this uh, flange point here is to compress the packing inside this tube. So th the system works a number of ways. You simply have to um, deliver grease into here and that will create a kind of um, a greased hole which allows the ability to stop water coming in. The, the packing is to stop the grease and water coming back out. So when you do this up, it will, it will compress the packing. There's five rings in this particular gland, gland which I'm quite, quite chuffed about. Um, you don't want to over tighten this. The, the whole job of this system is simply to stop water coming in. That's all it's for. It's, it's not to do anything else. So if you haven't got water coming in, don't touch it. You know, the old saying goes, if it's not broke, don't, don't fix it. 
And in that instance, you you simply don't want to um, play with what's working for you. Yeah. Um, every so often, when you've gone cruising, you'll get drips, and you will need to add some grease into there. If it stops leaking, fine, that's done its job. If you're pumping grease in here and it's coming out here and here, this needs tightening because it's not supposed to come past here, and it'll start making a mess. And when it hits the shaft, it will get splattered around all over the place because the shaft's spinning. So at that point, you'll need to tighten both nuts up. So you've got two sets of nuts here. I'll just show you. This is one set for one side. So one is thinner, one is longer. The idea being that the thicker one would be to, would be to create compression on here, and that would allow that to go on. And then you would put the locking nut on the back of this to lock these together. So you put a spanner on each side to lock against each other. And that stops it undoing that way. The idea is it can only go forward is handy now you need to make sure you do these up equally because if you do it at a wonk you'll actually create this going oval and you'll damage the shaft so and you won't get a proper um, you won't get com a compression of the rings equally so you need to make sure it's done right if you over tighten these it will bind on the shaft and you will start creating a void you'll wear out the shaft itself eventually that happens anyway it's kind of unavoidable with, uh, with, with machines but the idea is simply to stop water coming in. Now, there's uh, the school of thought that if you're on tidal and your shaft is spinning and free spinning, with this particular system on the engine system it's going on, which is a Lister, the, the, the shaft won't be allowed to free spin. It's the way they design the gearboxes. With a lot of modern boxes like PRMs, the hydraulic versions, some of the mechanicals as well, the shaft can free spin. Now, there's a school of thought as to where this is good or bad. You've got clutch packs in those particular boxes. I'm not going to go into that right now, but if you're uncomfortable with it, it running freely, then there are ways in which you can clamp the shaft down. I'm not going to go into that with this video. I'm focusing on packing. So with that being said, if you need to repack your gland, you can do this in the water. It's recommended that you don't because if you've got a damaged shaft, if your alignment's out, the engine's hanging off of one engine belt, and that's a very common problem, you, you, your engine system is hanging off the shaft and leaning in one way or the other yeah so you're going to undo this and it's going to try and come off it's going to be complicated you have the potential for old equipment that's been in the boat for more than 20 years to have a risk of damage to yourself the craft and potentially water coming in and that's alarming yeah if you're not an engineer or if you're not confident and you can be confident and not an engineer because some things are able for any person to do don't be alarmed at that you must decide what you're comfortable doing. If you're not comfortable, don't do it. It's that simple. If you want some advice, uh, there's a group on Facebook called Timia, and that's the Independent Marine Engineers Association. The very fundamentals of that page and that group is to speak to professional engineers who are vetted. Um, the idea of vetting there simply is to pass over insurance and a level of citation on what you can do. That way, if you want to speak to a, a vetted engineer, you can get information, make a decision based on your abilities, decide whether you want to then escalate that to a professional and have them come out and do it for you. Um, if you want to do it yourself, you can discuss that with a group there. It's open to everyone to join, um, but in order to be an engineer and then sell your wares, you must be a vetted engineer. Anyway, again, I digress. I seem to do that a lot these days. So when it comes to repacking a stern gland, all you need to do simply, if you feel that the equipment's in good condition, you're comfortable doing it, or the engineer's doing it, they should know what to do you undo the, the, the locking nut on each side, take the nuts right out of the way, and then you withdraw the flange part here and slide it up the shaft, okay? In some cases, you'll find that the cup link for the gearbox and that are very, very close to this and you haven't got a lot of them to work. But for the purposes of this video, we'll assume that it's, it's a good installation, plenty of room. So you slide that right out of the way. Bring plenty of disposable tissue or blue roll because you want to clean this up. Clean, clean, clean is really the best practice to have. Ensure that everything is nice and clean. Wipe it all down if there's grease everywhere. You're going to want to use a tool to get this packing out. The most efficient way of doing that is a packing tool remover, which is basically a flexible wire with a what's basically a corkscrew on the end. And that will allow you to wind it into the packing and pull the rings out. You want to take all the old rings out of the way. Because once you do that, it will allow you to put in new rings. Okay. Um, this packing is basically embossed if you like it's pumped in with um, i think this one will be uh ptfe which is similar to plumbing yeah ptfe is a very very good lubricant 
It's used in a lot of applications. The idea is it'll create a good seal, but also allow the shaft to run past it and slip. You don't want this binding on your shaft, okay? So use a good quality packing if you can. Um, and also you need a specific type of thickness for the type of shaft you've got. All right, I'll try and find a chart for you all so you can have a look if you want to. So once you've got that packing out, you will have water coming into the boat. Um, you've taken the gland out of the way, so obviously water's gonna come into the craft. If you've planned this properly, if you've got good equipment, even if it's old and you can work with it and it's safe, you've got the right packing you need, good quality marine grease. Now this is Morris K99. I am not affiliated with Morris, just so you know. Um, I do use their products for, for most of what I do, their oils and lubricants, because they are very, very good. But again, I'm not affiliated with Morris. Um, you've got everything ready, you've got the right packing, and I'm not a new length of it, then crack on. Uh, make sure your bilge pump works, because you're gonna get drips coming in. And if you're lucky, it'd just be dribble, dribble, dribble. So a simple way of preparing the packing for uh, repacking is you First of all, if it's like this, this has been in my box a while because I haven't used this one in a while. So you just take a good sharp knife and either decide if the end is going to be true or not. It's a bit frayed. So just cut the end off so it's nice squared off. You then coil this around your shaft a number of times. Now, bear in mind, there's not going to be any wastage here because you're going to plan it carefully, aren't you? Or so they say. So you take your knife. Do not cut this on the shaft. If you score the shaft, you can damage it. Simply score it, yeah? Just score this and make a line on here. Now you wanna work with this edge that you should have prepped beforehand. Obviously, as I say, if it's a bit frayed at the end, nice crisp edge would make a big difference. So you start from here and you score it, because when you unwind it, you will get from there, where the score mark is, the correct length of packing, and that creates a ring, that's one ring. You'll get a number of rings meaning how many calls you've made, okay? Now, this is an important thing to know. Assuming that your engine alignment and engine mounts are in good condition, you will be able to withdraw the flange and everything out of the way properly. But more importantly is when you come to put this onto the, sh onto the shaft, you'll wrap it round and slide it into place, it will go into here squarely. Because sometimes you'll find the engine is leaning on one side or the other and therefore the gap here is bigger or smaller than the other side. If that's the case, a little trick to do is obviously check the engine alignment later on. Um, but put the, put the packing down on something, put a screwdriver handle and just pull that back or something solid to just thin it out a little bit. It does help. You're not trying to distort the shape of this. You're just trying to allow a little bit of wiggle room to get a ring in there. When you put each ring in, make sure each cut is offset from another cut. Don't align all the cuts together. Offset them, you know, different points in the clock face, so to speak. So one there, one there, one there, one there. That just stops any water coming past and creating a problem. The idea is to create a seal here. So as I say, uh, clearance have allowed for five rings in there. Um, I personally would take one out just to allow the flange face to actually seat into that ring and create a better seal. Gives you a spare ring anyway, that's a matter of opinion. Um, like that, yeah? If it goes in, it's gonna be a nice true fit, it's all gonna line up properly, and you're gonna allow the um, packing to compress nicely with the grease inside it. You only need to stop water coming in and stop grease coming in. The only time you touch this gland is when grease is starting to come out here and come out here. If it's coming out there and there, it's because this isn't tight enough and grease is going blah, 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 and working its way out, okay? That's all this is to do, to stop water coming in. It's all it's designed to do. The bearing supports the shaft. This doesn't, okay? Arguably, yeah, there's a little bit of bearing space in there, but this is a gland, okay? I think that should pretty much cover the basic gist of what we've got going on here. Uh, I plan on filming the uh, installation works on this. I know it'll be another, much of the, another job of the same thing, although we will be covering a little bit of welding um, a new boss to the boat and a slight change of the system, so. Uh, I won't make that quite as involved video as last time. Um, if you have any questions, drop us a message in the comments below. As I say, I'm still new to YouTube. I am looking at uh, improving my ability and finding a format that works for everybody. And hopefully you enjoy the video. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye.